So you might look at the thumbnail and be like, Monica, are you actually wearing a scarf? It is summer and it's 90 degrees in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. The majority of my Slytherin merchandise is hoodies and long sleeve shirts. So that we're working with it. <laughs> we're working with it. Got the bow. The bow counts. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I am filming the finale for the HP Project Pan that was originally created by my good friend here on YouTube, Christina Chang. I have to say, honestly, as far as a Project Pan goes with the actual panning goals, I didn't do that great. And I'm here to admit that and to talk about what I learned during this process. But I have to give a, a good big shout out to Christina because this overall idea and the prompts and everything were so much fun. I think this was the most fun I've had with a project pan in a long time. And I'm just sorry that I kind of jumped onto this when I already had so many other projects going on because I felt like I, I like neglected this one a bit. Which is why I didn't hit nearly as many as many goals as I really wanted to. So I will have my intro, my other update videos linked down below as well as Christina's original video and her videos for the HP Project Pan series linked in the description box. Make sure you check all of them out, especially if you haven't seen any of the updates before this one because I'm really not going to go in depth into why I picked each prod or product or which number prompt is for each one. I'm basically just kind of wrapping this whole project up and talking about my experience with it. So the first product is kind of a give me. This was the foundation I picked and this is the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel Foundation. I finished this within like the first like two weeks of this project. This is one of my favorite foundations and I was able to dupe it for a wet and wild foundation. If you missed that whole video I'll link it up in the cards if you want to check it out. But this was kind of like my give me product because I knew I was very close if not already really close to finishing this when I started the project. The next product was this uh, ColourPop uh, Superstar Loose Pigment in the shade Honey Pot, which is a very silver kind of color right there. It's a loose shadow, and I rarely wear reach for loose shadows, and I have to admit, I still didn't really reach for this. Most use I got out of this product was as an inner corner highlight when I did a more dramatic look, which to be honest, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not going for like a super smoky dramatic look. So I'm not gonna get rid of this product. I still really like it. I just need to, I think, rethink my collection, reorganize my collection, and rethink the way I'm doing makeup day-to-day -day in order to reach more for not only my loose singles, but my also actual single eyeshadows because I barely touch those as it is either. The next product I want to talk about is from YSL. This was a luxury mascara in a green shade and I had a pretty funny story time about this in one of my other updates. I'll link that up in the cards if you want to see it. But the moral of that story was that this was not water or sweat proof. Which is really disappointing in a luxury mascara. Like I love the color, I love the way that this looked, but Every time I would consider putting this on, I just thought about like, oh, what happens if it rains? What happens if you sweat? What happens if it's hot? What happens if it's this? Or what happens if it's that? Like, I, I couldn't trust this mascara, which is such a disappointment considering not only how expensive it is, but how pretty it is. It's a green mascara. I, I really wish I could have used it more, but I'm not sure how I could have. The downside is that it streaks, it runs, it's not waterproof, it's not sweatproof, so if it's spring, if it's summer, if it's fall, when the heck are you supposed to use this? When? So I did hit the three months of use on this, so this is going to be thrown out. I, I have to say, my experience with this has really pushed me away from trying any of YSL's other eye products, considering the fact that Knowing the formula here, I, I really can't spend the money on those other products. Like, it's not waterproof, it's not sweatproof. I mean, it looks pretty decent, but this was the green. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't, if this was just a black, like, mascara, I would have gotten rid of this a long time ago. Because it doesn't live up to the standards of what I expect even a drugstore black mascara to live up to, you know? So ultimately, I was a bit disappointed in this product. I am glad that I tried it. 
because I haven't tried a whole lot of other luxury products, so I'm glad I had the experience and was able to try this out, but I can't really recommend this because it doesn't, it doesn't live through day-to-day -day life. I'm not, you know, sitting in one air-conditioned room all day. I have to live a life and go outside and do things, so I can't recommend this for that at all. The next product in this project was from Stila, and this was a glitter and glow in the shade Gold Goddess. I did actually, I think out of all of the products here, except for maybe my Pan That palette, I use this the most. I really enjoyed the shade. I love the Stila Glitter and Glow formula. It is one of my favorite glitter formulas ever, especially when it comes to loose or liquid glitters. I love these things. And so my goal here was to really use this up and not have it dry out because I did have one of these dry out on me and it was so sad. But I got about halfway through. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this real quick. So you can see a little bit in the packaging here. I did get about halfway through this product. It really does last a long time and it goes a long way. And I really enjoy it so far. So I'm honestly like not mad about this. I'm not mad about this. I still enjoy this product and I know I'm still going to get use out of it. So it just really helped me learn more about how far each one of these glitter and glows can go and how much I still like it. The next product I have is a highlight from Wet n Wild and this is the Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade White Raven. I had, oh, let me just drop it. I had this in my Everyday Z palette for a long time, but unfortunately, especially when I'm going to work, this was a bit too bright and stark for everyday wear, even when I blended it into the rest of my makeup. It was a bit, I mean, it was a bit too much, honestly, and I couldn't wear this to work every day, so this product trying to pan even just a little corner of this product was a bit tough so let me show you how far that i got this is how far i got in the product up here in this corner right there you can also see that it did get stained there's like some other shades on top because i kept this in my z palette with my face powders with my contour powders so unfortunately a little bit did get on the highlighter i'm going to try and clean this up the best that i can maybe just like swatch over the whole thing to get the rest of those off knowing that this was so stark i just was not tempted to use this and it wasn't really feasible for me to use this on an everyday basis Despite the fact that I knew with a bit of work, I could have maybe made this work for every day, it just wasn't there. So while I love the Wet n Wild highlighter formula, this shade was just not the best shade to try and pan during the summer, unfortunately. Next, I have a pair of lashes from House of Lashes. This is the House of Lashes in Knockout. I thought this would be my easiest product because I only wanted to use these 10 times. I only use these four times. I rarely reach for false lashes as it is, so maybe it was a bit foolish for me to include these in this project, but I don't know. I feel like maybe I should try out some other false lashes because maybe these were just a bit too big for my eyes. I have very hooded lids, so a lot of false lashes can just look a bit cartoonish on me. So that kind of knocks out everyday use, and when it's just me and playing with makeup, I'm not reaching for lashes. I just, I can't, I just don't reach for lashes. Like, I guess, I don't. And I thought this would be an easy goal for me to reach, but apparently I was wrong. And I did not reach for these at least 10 times. I reached for them four times though, so I think I'm gonna keep these, maybe use them one more time. But I'm gonna try and experiment maybe with some other false lashes, because I'm hoping that at some point throughout this process i find a pair of like affordable good sized false lashes that i can feel comfortable putting on in a relatively short amount of time and by that i mean like under 10 minutes <laughs> last but not least we have my pan that palette for 2019 and i included some specific shades in this project i included the four house colors so to say which were destiny all-star edge and axis so let's take a quick look at my palette as you can see i did hit pan in destiny which was very exciting i'm very happy that i did that i expanded the pan in edge but i did not make as much progress in all-star or in axis as i was hoping I have to keep telling myself that this isn't a total loss because I still made some great progress not only in the four shades that I was expecting, but in the whole palette overall. I was really focusing on my contour palette in my 9 pan 19 and on the other shades in this palette, 
more so than I was focusing on this project overall. So I think this really taught me a good lesson about how many projects I can really handle at once because you can really only pan so many things before you're panning enough things for a full face and you're bored every day, day in, day out, using the same products because you're trying to hit pan on all of them. When I have this huge collection of products that I, I still want to use and I still want to utilize, I really need to strike a good balance between panning products and still re- like, um, what's the word I'm trying to reach for? Rotating. There we go. Between panning products and rotating my current collection in order to get use out of everything that I currently have. So thank you guys so much for watching this finale. Make sure you check out Christina's channel. I absolutely adore her channel and we bond all the time over random Harry Potter stuff. I am clearly a Slytherin and I love everything Harry Potter except for um, every tweet that JK Rowling has sent out and also the Fantastic Beast series. Cool. So make sure you check out her channel and her finale. I absolutely adored this project and I'm just glad that I was able to participate in it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.